Thanks for staying with us. Looks like we are in for a rough start today. Lots of news to react to. Frankly, you know, we're coming back after a long weekend, and lots of news to react to. First, it's going to be news on partial lockdown. Then. Reliance numbers, Reliance right issue, another investment investor has come in the Geo platform. Uh, that's Reliance for you, which is going to keep the markets uh, slightly, uh, you know, under check. HUL seven percent drop. We are talking about March numbers. This did not happen in demonetization. Is this a clear indication that consumer is slowing down? And then on top of that, you've got the GST. Whether collections actually and unexpected lines have really gone below. Uh, uh, you know, one lakh crore. So that, in the sense, is a clear indication of which way the tax collections are also moving. But let's understand the impact of partial lockdown. Forty-two percent of Indian districts clearly are in green zone now, but large part of metros uh, still continue to remain in red zone. How easy it will be for Indian pharma companies who manage a complex supply chain to go ahead with full resumption of their activities. To understand the impact of partial lockdown, uh, we have with us Mr. Um, G. B. Prasad of Dr. Reddy. Mr. Prasad, good morning and thank you for joining us. For Dr. Reddy's, how will life change uh, now that partial lockdown has got lifted? Well, uh, to be honest, we have been running our factories already from day one. Uh, the initial week, we had a lot of hiccups uh, because of uh, the difficulty of uh, our staff reaching the factories uh, and also to operate at a reduced staffing level. So over the last few weeks, we have ironed out all those issues, though uh, we are operating with lesser uh, uh, workforce. We are near um, uh, capacity today in terms of operations. We use the number of innovations to be able to do more with less. We reorganized uh, the shifts into 12-hour shifts, put in all precautions, and uh, we are pretty much at normal, except for uh, logistical hiccups, which are also getting resolved rapidly. And I must say the government, the state government, the local government, the central government have been very supportive to keep the supply chain going uh, in these difficult times. Okay. I'm going to shift gears completely from local news to global news. Uh, we understand that there is some good news, at least that is what US FDA is indicating on Remedizable. What is your understanding on uh, the US FDA emergency approval and what it means for Indian pharma companies? So firstly uh, and foremost, the, the, the data from the Remedizable clinical trial is not complete. While there is anecdotal evidence and there is some limited clinical trial data, uh, it's my view that uh, we have to wait for the outcome. However, since there are uh, you know, no uh, um, approved medicines, the FDA has studied whatever data they have access to and taken a view that it can be tried in serious circumstances. So it's certainly a ray of hope, but uh, we have to wait for the clinical data. As far as India is concerned, I think uh, uh, Gilead will have to launch the product here, either directly or through uh, uh, some licensees. So that strategy, we have to wait for them. When the initial success was discovered on uh, hydrochloroquine, it turned out to be a great business opportunity for Indian pharma companies which were making that drug stroke medicine. Uh, do you yes. see that... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the Glida opportunity could also turn out to be a big opportunity for Indian pharma companies? Well, um, hydroxychloroquine is already a big opportunity because based on the limited uh, trial data, many uh, countries are stocking up and uh, companies which make the product are exporting them uh, through the government uh, permission route, of course. But, uh, you know, it is a good opportunity. But uh, whether it will be a transient opportunity or a long-term opportunity is yet to be assessed. Everyone in the stock market is quite excited about revisiting pharma stocks and there are a lot of uh, factors, Mr. Prasad. One, that the supply chain will move from China to other countries. B, there's a natural tailwind for the pharma sector. C, US FDA approvals could be slightly more because of the emergency situation. Uh, do you think there is enough and more excitement uh, for pharma companies in the new post-COVID world now? 
Um, I, I think uh, the industry is optimistic. Uh, the tailwinds are there for the industry, especially globally supply chains. Uh, the companies are a little wary of concentrated supply chains. So there will be some uh, movement to move towards India. Indian companies themselves, uh, based on all the incentives the government has uh, offered, as well as relaxed uh, business, ease of business uh, uh, situation, I think the industry is in for a, a period of growth, both to you know de-risk China as well as the upcoming opportunities globally, and also the sentiment among the pharmaceutical industries worldwide uh, to move operations uh, distantly from China or diversify from China. Every company we've spoken to, uh, sir, is clearly of the view that uh, there was a pre-COVID strategy and now there's a post-COVID strategy. It is like saying, you know, the difference between BC and AD. And Dr. Eddy, what will change uh, in terms of the new alignment with the real world? So firstly, there is a big uh, change in the way we operate. The, the operational strategy is to keep every employee safe and also keep the operations running. And to do this, there has to be a significant uh, uh, technology solution in, from an IT perspective, digitizing many workflows, keeping people distant, allowing people to work from home. So like most companies, we've done a lot uh, in digital transformation to enable our uh, teams to work remotely and uh, also not be crowded and uh, create another spread. Uh, so that is one change. The second change is that a lot of opportunities uh, are coming up um, uh, from a supply chain security perspective. So companies are gearing up to see what to do. Thirdly, there are specific drugs which are, you know, indicated for for COVID treatment, not just the mainstream drugs, but also drugs which are useful in maintaining the patient healthy. Uh, uh, keeping other things, uh, enabling the respirator uh, treatment, all of that. So there is a, a bunch of drugs which the demand is going to spike and people, government, governments come and hospitals are stockpiling. So that's another opportunity. And I think uh, it is also a realization that pharmaceutical industry must play a larger role uh, and move from just supplying medicines to understand the healthcare ecosystem, how it's going to change, and how we can contribute positively to that change. So these are some of the strategy shifts post-COVID, and uh, you know, all of us are working on these aspects. Okay, uh, let me address one final question on behalf of shareholders. When I spoke to the management of Lupin, I asked them the following: How should with each crisis, uh, Mr. Prasad, Dr. Reddy has only emerged stronger. I've been tracking your company for 20 years now. Uh, where do you think the pharma, R&D, stroke, innovation is going to move now? Uh, do you think there is going to be much more greater bent towards companies like Dr. Reddy because you have innovation, you have R&D, you follow international standards? And do you think small companies will get into bigger trouble and they will start losing business. So do you think this crisis will only make big Indian pharma companies bigger? Um, I don't know if it will make big companies bigger, but it will make innovative and agile companies stronger. And uh, there is a role, role for everybody in this ecosystem. The small companies can be part of the supply chain or bring innovation. And the large companies can fund innovation, take the innovation globally and also invest more dollars in investment in uh, research. So I, I, firstly, I think there is, it's not the big will survive and the small will die, but it will certainly be the smart and innovative which will survive. Smart, fast, and innovative. And those who don't respond to this opportunity will lose out. So what would you tell your shareholders that next two quarters could be challenging or next two quarters could be interesting because you made right investments and you will emerge stronger and yeah. bigger uh, when the crisis settles down? Yeah, so we are not uh, that worried about the short term. I think the short term will take care of itself. But uh, we are really looking at how do we as a company look at the long term and transform our trajectory 
to become stronger and make more impact in the healthcare ecosystem. So I, I, I certainly don't want to talk about the next two quarters, but long term, we believe that the strength that we built over the decades will stand as good. And in the last few years, we have become faster, better, and also stronger. So I believe we are well positioned for the future. Appreciate your time. Glad you could join us. Thank you for being so vocal about the impact of lockdown. What shareholders should expect, and what exactly is the you know new pharma opportunity, which is now clearly opening up because of uh, some indications that hydrochloroquine and remdesivir are working.